the Monday night so much because we've been so busy working and you know some of the updates we have. And um, uh, it has been tremendous. We've officially opened up the East African office. And uh, for those of you in East Africa, we have an office in the, it's called a green, um, the, I think green top tower, sixth floor. That's where we are. And um, you can meet there and meet with the staff there. But it's good to be back joining you guys on the, the Monday night prophetic prayer. I've been following all the good things you guys have been doing. Thank you for your consistency. But uh, today I want to teach you something. Um, you, you've Some of you heard about some of the things happening last week, how people were, uh, mom wrote a, a quote and then the people were arguing and uh, they make it sound as if we said, when we say that you reign in life, you are reigning over people. That's not what we said. You reign in life over situations and circumstances. But prayer is very important in that same aspect of reigning in life. You know, one of the things that I find out is a lot of Christians think that in Christianity, everything is delivered to us on a platter of gold. We think that everything, you know, God just hands us things because that was what one of the, the mentality that people had. And we never said that. But I'm teaching this today so that we can have the accurate understanding of what it means to absolutely operate by the reality of the word of God. The Bible says, you know, it's to, it tells us in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 9, it's for a great door, and effectual is open unto me. See, God has opened up a great door for us. It's glorious. Everybody gets excited about that. You know, the great opportunity God has set before you. But I want you to notice what it says. And there are many adversaries. They are many. It continues right there. It says there are many adversaries. But how do we navigate that so that we can reign in life? You see, being a believer does not exempt anybody from dealing with spiritual warfare. It's real. It's practical. It only gives you gives us an advantage over any opposition. The Bible tells us in Isaiah, Isaiah for the three verses one and two. It says, "But now, but now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not." For I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. The next verse says, But when you pass through the waters, I will be, I will be with you. If you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. It tells you if you go through those things, you are still going to rain. It says, I will be with you. If you pass through the river, the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You see, regardless of the fact that we are redeemed, guess what? It's talking to the redeemed. It says, when you pass through the water, when you pass through, when you walk through the fire, not if you pass through the water. It's a when you. Always pay attention to the word of God. It says, when you pass through the fire. When you pass through the water, it's telling you it will happen, but your eyes is not on the water or the fire, it's on the victory. So when we when we understand this, then we can understand when the Bible says in 1 John 5 verse 4, so whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. You see, Satan will try different things. But don't let him distract you from what you're called to do. So today, what I want to talk about is, I want to talk about what prayer does to you. We've talked about angels. We've talked about other things. But what does prayer do to you? You know, prayer has all kinds of benefit to the believer. You see, because every believer has a different issue. So when they pray, they get different results. No wonder the Bible says in Ephesians 6 verse 18, it says, Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all uh, perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, this tells you there are different kinds of prayers you can pray depending on where you are, what you're going through. 
but I'll try as much as possible to give you an understanding of what prayer will do for you. Number one, whenever you pray, it will provoke heaven's help. It will provoke heaven's help. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Without help from God, we become helpless on earth. Satan will throw things at you, and he's not joking. He knows that the time is short, so it's out to come against you to destroy your, your, your everything that you have. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, full force. And the Bible talked about the wickedness that's in the world. You know, all of those things, the Bible says when we need help, we can call on, on him. It says we'll, we'll have help in time of need. The Bible says in Psalms 127 verse 1, and it makes a statement. It says, except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake it, but in vain. In other words, you cannot trust the watchman if the watchman is tired and wants to sleep. God has to watch over the watchman. In other words, some of the things that we we have trusted in life. You can't trust the stock market. You can't trust all those things. They will fail at one time, except God is in it. Those things do not have enduring value. Are you with me? It means simply that our, our faith and our trust, our hope is not in those things. It's not in the watchman, but it's in the God that watches over the watchman. So we have to understand that every blessing and accomplishment in life comes as a result of the help of God. Let's look at a scripture in Acts chapter 26, verse 22. It says, having therefore, or maybe somebody can read that for us. Um, Acts 26, verse 22, somebody can read that because I want to really get this to you to help you understand the benefits of prayers. The benefits of prayers. Can somebody Acts, read that? Acts 26, 22. Therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand, witnessing both to small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses said would come. Hallelujah. You see, he was preaching the same message as the other apostles of his day, but he got better results. Why? The difference was he had help of God. That is the key. So it's not an, it's not who is preaching, but who, who gets the special help from God. He says, having therefore obtained help of God, I continued on to this day, witnessing both the small and great, saying none other things than those things which the prophets and Moses did say shall come. He just continued preaching the same message, but what made him effective was the fact that he had help from God. I mean, think about what it says in Psalms 60, verses 11 and 12. Somebody can just read that. Psalms 60, 11 and 12. Give mm -hmm. us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. Through That's God, right. we will do valiantly, for it is he who shall tread down our enemies. Hallelujah. And that's why we pray. That's why you pray. He says, God, he said, give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Have you ever been in a situation where you're trusting people to come through for you and they never came through? It happens. Some people might have the right intention, but because they you know they are human, what's going to happen is they're going to fail sometime. It says, give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God, we shall do valiantly, for it is he that shall tread down our enemies. You see, the Bible talked about the secret of King Uzziah, or why he became successful during his reign. In fact, if you look at Second Chronicles chapter 26, we're going to look at verses 1 
5 and 7. And somebody can read that. Or I can just read it straight up for time's sake. Somebody can read that. Okay, Second Chronicles 26. So 2 Chronicles 26, 1. Now all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king instead of his father, Amaziah. Mm -hmm. The next verse, verse is 5. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. He sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had mm -hmm. understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. I love that. You see, we're talking about prayer. It says, as long as he served the Lord, the Lord made him prosper. It's very interesting. A lot of people start out in the church, and when they came in messed up lives, God begins to bless them. God begins to move. And then all of a sudden, they walk away from the things that made them successful. That's a sad thing to say. You see, they walk away from the things that made them successful. And he says, as long as he sought the Lord, as long as he prayed, you seek God, he made him, God made him to prosper. And then let's go to the next verse, seven. Verse seven, God helped him against the Philistines, against the Arabians who lived in Gerbel, and against the Muonites. Think about this. Think about this. And God helped him. Do you know sometimes your physical body gets tired? Sometimes your mind gets tired, but we need the help of God. That's what prayer comes in. See, when you pray, you can find help in the time of need. You can find help in the time of need. No, prayer is not just telling God your needs. Because he already knows them. The Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 32, God knows what you have need of. It is getting him to intervene in your situation on the basis of what he has said. He is your heavenly father. He knows your needs. But he requires, we require his help if you're going to overcome the enemy. People are not our enemies. The enemy will bring, sometimes use people to try to get to us. So we need to pray. When we pray, you know, is to you know want to take when we when we pray, you know, what we do is we take our accuser to the courtroom of heaven for judgment. And that's what happens. You're taking the enemy and saying, Lord, according to your word, this is what he says. Once you are justified, the help of God is released. Once you are justified, the help of God is released to you. When God becomes your helper. You enjoy unlimited breakthroughs and stand out amongst people. I want to tell you that God is committed to sending help for you when you call on him. And he has given us this assurance. If you look at a scripture in Isaiah 41, verse, verses 10 to 13, um, maybe somebody can read that. Okay, Isaiah 41, starting in verse 10. Mm -hmm. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not mm -hmm. dismayed, for I am mm -hmm. your God. I mm -hmm. will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will Great. uphold you with my righteous right hand. Great. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. Hallelujah. They shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. You, who, you shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing and as a non-existent thing. Hallelujah. For I, the Give Lord me. your God, mm -hmm. uh, verse 13, for I, the Lord your God, will hold your hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Hallelujah. And when we read the word of God, that's why we need to read the word of God concerning it. He will send help when you pray. That's the first thing that will happen, help will come when we pray let us expect help from heaven i hope this is helping somebody i hope this is helping somebody understand this is a benefit you get for prayer you get help even when god has already known what, what you want the moment you pray you are engaging him to release help the bible says we enter the throne of grace boldly we can obtain mercy we can find mercy and obtain we can find help at a time of need. In fact, the psalmist puts it this way in Psalm 56, verse 9. He said, when I cry unto you, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is with me. What a powerful statement 
by the word of God. The second thing I want to share with you today is the benefit of prayer is calling forth the mercy of God. What does that mean? When you pray, you bring forth the mercy of God. Think about when Jesus stopped for blind Bartimaeus. Why? He called out, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. You see, mercy is one of God's profound way of helping people. Hebrews 4 verse 16 again says that we may obtain mercy. We may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. You know, certain things may be responsible for where we are, where we find ourselves in life. We may not know what those things are, but the mercy of God, when the mercy of God comes, it will always answer for us when we cry unto him in praise. When the mercy of God is engaged upon your life, something happened. You see, God was angry with uh, King David because he had counted the people and uh, he sent a plague among the people such that they had 70,000 people that died in one day. But David cried out to the Lord for God's mercy. Mercy. When sometimes when things are going wrong in your life, you don't know why it's going wrong. You don't understand it. That's when you call out for mercy. The benefit of prayer is you can engage the mercy of God. In fact, the mercy of God will clean up every wrong you've done that you don't know about. Mercy will triumph over judgment. Mercy will triumph over judgment. Something will be released upon your life that will triumph over any judgment. You see, you might have made some mistakes. And you don't even know what it is. You're wondering why things are not working out. All you have to do is cry out for the mercy of God. Second Samuel chapter 24, verse 14. It says, let, all, let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. For his mercies are great. And let us not fall into the hand of man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if you fall into the hand of man, man will not forgive you. Man will not show you mercy. If somebody makes a mistake, God will forgive them. He will show them mercy. But the society will not show you mercy. The society will make sure judgment is served. But when you come to God, that's why King David says, let us now fall into the hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. I would rather fall into the hand of God than fall into the hand of men. Because the hand of men will condemn you, will crush you, will crush your spirit. So when we pray, immediately we engage the mercy of God. Now, we have to understand that we need to place all of, of our affairs, God's mercy in everything we do. If you don't understand some things, we just got to trust God and trust his mercy. When you're fighting against, uh, against, you see, what you're fighting against might not be the devil, or it might not be witches like in Africa, or wizards, or people trying to do things against you. It might be something that you did wrong. Maybe you don't understand why things are going on. You know what? All you need to do is cry out for mercy. Cry out for mercy. They will never ask who did sin, this man or his parents. The mercy of God comes in and takes care of business. The mercy of God comes in. If it's something that has happened in, a, in your generations, in your family or things like that, maybe some people, you know, they, they never keep money in their hands. Money just comes through their hands and they don't understand. Just all you need to do is invoke the mercy of God. It will change everything you do, you know. Some people have a habit of things just going wrong. They don't understand why it goes wrong. You see, all you need to do is you need to invoke the mercy of God. You need to invoke the mercy of God. If you find yourself in such predicament, you can cry out for the mercy of God and those things can be cut off from you. And that's one of the those are benefits that you get from the from prayer, from prayer. We have to learn to plead the mercy of God against mysterious afflictions in our lives. And those afflictions will give up. Like Bland Bartimaeus, 
he had been afflicted. He had, I mean, he was blind. And uh, think about it, he was a beggar. And when he called out to the mercy of God, something happened. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 13, it says, go ye and learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I will not come. It says, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You want to understand that mercy is part of God's nature. He is full of mercy. He is full of compassion. There was a time in the Bible when um, they had three nations that had come against Judah in battle, and something happened. You know, Judah went out against them, singing about the mercies of God. And the Bible says, God set an ambush against the enemies. God set an ambush. The, you know, I love that song that says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. He said, with my mouth, I will make known his faithfulness for all generations. I love that song. His mercy. I, I, I believe so much in that mercy. The Bible says, blessed are the merciful for this obtain mercy. And that's why we give a lot of mercy to people. We give people mercy so that we can obtain mercy also. When you give mercy, only the divine has the capacity to forgive and to show mercy. So when you show mercy, you're releasing the divinity that's in you. Now, if you look, somebody can read Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 21 and 22. Second Chronicles 20, 21 and 22. Somebody can read that quickly. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Hallelujah. My God, my God. I love the word of God. It does not make sense because we want to attack the enemy. It said, just sing of the mercies of God. Just sing of the mercies of God. For his mercy is endured forever. His mercy caused God to set an ambush against the enemy. Those are secrets that a lot of people do not know about God. I taught a message many years ago called the quality of mercy. Most people do not understand the quality of mercy. You see, when there's mercy in place, judgment is suspended. That means whatever you did wrong, God will turn the, the battle in your favor, regardless of things. His mercies endure it forever. The Bible says in uh, Lamentation uh, chapter 3, verse 22, it said, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassion never, never fails. And these are the things we, we have to understand that it will bring the help of God. Also, we invoke the mercy of God into the place. I hope this is helping somebody. I hope this is helping you guys. Now, the other thing we've talked about is when we pray, we also trigger angels to intervene. Whenever we pray, these are the benefits of prayer, we can easily trigger angels to come into this. That's another aspect of God's help. It is provoked when we pray. When Peter was in prison, we know the story, and he was waiting to die, the saints began to pray continually, and God sent an angel. The benefit of it, we can begin to see angelic interventions. Begin to believe that. Angelic interventions. We know the story. And uh, when, when Peter was in jail, the church was praying. I mean, James had just been killed. And uh, when Peter was arrested, all of a sudden, the church decided to do something. I've taught on this in prayer. But then something happened. If you look at Acts chapter 12, if you go verse 11, it says, And the angel said unto him, Gird yourself and bind, bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment upon thee and follow me. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, now, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angels and has delivered me out of the hands of, of Herod 
and from all the expectation of the people of God, of the Jews. May God send angels into your life to deliver you from the expectations of your enemy. When the enemies are thinking that you're going to fail, God is going to lift you up. You see, I've said this, angels are your secret service. They are your security agents. And their strength is unlimited. If you look at Psalms 103, verse 20, somebody can read that quickly. You know, you, you see that they will ward off every evil and all plague from you. You see, they are the firefighters of heaven. When angels are involved, something happens. They are God's rescue experts. They can pick you up from where you are. Psalm 103, 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Hallelujah. You see, angels, the role of angels is very simple. They wait for the command that comes when you pray and you provoke that to happen. And God sends a command, rescue this one. You see, when people do not understand the, what they call the dynamics of prayer, they're just saying words. But when you understand that, when you release words, angels are going to come. Can you imagine? Think about this. When, you, when somebody calls, if you're in the United States, you call 911, you expect the emergency services to be at your place. That's the expectation which you have when we pray. But most people do not think like that. You know what they think like that? They just pray. They hope, they hope something will happen. No, expect angels to intervene. If you can expect fire people to come when you when you call 911 and say there's a fire, you should expect angels to come. These are what I call dynamics of prayer. That means when Jesus prayed, he knew that angels were going to be there. He understood the dynamics. There was an expectation. When there's an expectation, your faith is vibrant. Your faith is seen. But when people do not understand that, what do they do? They just pray and they say, oh, I'm suffering. Help is supposed to come. <laughs> help is supposed to come. Because most people say, well, we're going to go through tribulation. Yeah, but help is supposed to come. You shall find help in the time of need. He didn't say you shall stay there. He says you shall find help. Angels are there to intervene. We have to understand their job is to intervene in the midst of trouble and rescue the believer so that we can reign in life. You see? And this is what God wants to establish in the believers. Think about this. Think about Jesus when he was arrested before he was crucified. Remember what happened? You know, Mr. Ninja Peter decided to cut a man's ear. And he just sliced the man's ear. I mean, Peter must have been practicing. I say this all the time. He must have been practicing how to slice a man's ear with a killing the man he just sliced the ear very very quickly he must have practiced it but then jesus did something he stopped him from striking the man again in fact jesus made a statement in uh, matthew 26 verses 52 to 53 um somebody can read that oh pastor david you can read that matthew 26 52 and 53 Okay, got it. 26, 52, 53. Got it? But Jesus said to him, put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father, and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? Hallelujah. He, was, he, says, he says, do you think I cannot now pray? Benefit of prayer. You see, he expected if you call 911, 911 will respond. It's not like in Africa when you call the fire people, you will give them gas money to bring the to bring the firefighting tools to your house. And you have to, if it's an ambulance, you carry the people to the hospital. No, you expect a response. We have to understand that when we're praying, there has to be a dynamics that we expect to happen. If you can pray, you can. Call angels to come in. So we know what kind of prayer to pray, to bring angels. We know the prayer for, for mercy. We know also the prayer to obtain, you know, the Bible talked about obtaining help. So we should know what prayers we are praying, how to engage heaven, and how to bring to bear what heaven has made 
available. We can have help for any area we're looking forward to. And uh, I, 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 maybe uh, I'm going to give you one more point and then we can we can leave it up for the next time we're going to be here. The next thing is whenever you pray, it brings deliverance from affliction. See, some people don't understand. They say, but I'm a Christian. Why should that happen to me? It will happen because the, the thief does not ask questions before he comes to steal. He comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. So we are aware of him so that when he comes, we don't worry about him. We know how to take him out. The problem is we, you know, a lot of Christians have become ignorant of his devices. We shouldn't be. The Bible says in James chapter 5, in verse 13, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Let him pray. He didn't say, let him cry or let him watch. Pray. If you're afflicted, don't go and cry about it. He says, let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. God is a God of vital solutions for any affliction. He is the, it is the Holy Ghost prescription for deliverance from oppression. Pray. He says, if any, is any among you afflicted? Have you ever noticed in church, instead of people praying, they, they're complaining and they're crying. The Bible says, if is anyone afflicted, let him pray, not let him cry or let him watch. That means anyone that is battered by the enemy, anyone that is tormented by maybe any depression or depressed is expected to pray for the deliverance. Is this helping you? That person is expected to pray for the deliverance. It's expected of them. You see, if you see any yoke on your life that God did not put there, the anointing will destroy the yoke. Just pray and it'll be broken. But you know, when people don't know the dynamics of prayer, they don't understand the benefit of it. That's why when people pray, say, oh, Lord, we just thank you for goodness. Oh, we just thank you. No, what are you engaging? Jesus knew how to pray. He knew the dynamics of prayer. He said, don't you think I can pray my father to do this? And he tells you, if you are afflicted, pray. It tells you what to do. He didn't say just, just pray and just be, you know, be nice to God. He says, no, if you are afflicted, pray for deliverance from that affliction. You tell the devil to back up. So when you understand this, it changes how you deal with, 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 uh, with issues. I've even noticed some people come, they go to churches. The churches don't even do anything for them. They are sick. They walk in there and hear a nice motivational speech. Am I telling the truth? And uh, they, they, the pastor or the priest will give them a good motivational speech, telling them how wonderful it is. But they are sick. They need to pray for that affliction to go. They don't need to sit there and hear some nice message without praying for the affliction to go. So we have to understand that the kingdom of God is the kingdom of God enforces things through prayers. If you want to be delivered. You need to pray. You see, nobody was born for affliction. We have to always remember that God did not create us to be afflicted. We were created to become the revelation of the glory of God. You were created to become the revelation of the glory of God. I hope this is helping somebody because a lot of times people do not understand that. that. So that's why I, I can tell when people, when you call, talk about prayer, a lot of people don't get engaged because they pray and nothing happens, but they don't know how to pray. So if I pray and I expect deliverance for something, wouldn't I pray the next time there's an affliction? I will know how to pray. I will enforce the kingdom mandate so that I can get the manifestation of what God is saying. You see, prayer is what you use to free you from the affliction of the enemy and to restore you to the beauty that is in Christ. I think about this. There was a woman in the Bible called Hannah. Hannah had barrenness. She was very barren and she went to the temple and prayed. God heard her and gave her a son. Paul and Silas were in prison. 
having been beaten by stripes, but at the midnight hour, the Bible said they prayed and sang praises to God, and they came and ate quick and loose all of the chains that they had. The children of Israel were in bondage for 400 years. God only sent help after he heard their cries in prayer. I'm going to read that passage of scripture. And like I said, we just want to keep it about being removed from affliction. It says this in Exodus 3, verses 7 and 8. And the Lord said, I will surely, he said, I have, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard the cry by reason of their taskmaster, for I know their sorrow. He heard their cries. They prayed, prayed to God. He heard them. God is a God that answers prayers. It says, and I've come to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land into a good land and a large, he said, a good land and a large and a land flowing with milk and honey. I like vegetables when you talk about the land flowing with milk and honey. And one of them said, sounds sticky. You know, <laughs> you know, children and the way they think, you know, sounds a little sticky. But guess what? Once you understand what God is doing, you can put that into practice. You can put that into practice. You see, we have to come to the place where we no longer tolerate affliction. God only responds to your voice and prayer to put a stop on the attack of the enemy in your life. But most people don't pray. Let, let me tell you, have you ever noticed, especially when it comes to North America, a lot of people don't pray. Prayer meetings are the ones that most people don't show up for. In Africa, we pray. Think about how bad the governments are in Africa. That has, prayer has sustained us. Without prayer, we will not make it. Think about it. And now we can understand why Africans pray very much because they don't have a safety net. If you're done, you're done. The government is not helping you. So prayer has actually worked in Africa that has helped us not to be crushed from bad leadership. Think about that. So sometimes we say Africans pray too much, but they're not getting any results. There's no change. I just It just occurred to me, it's the prayer that has kept them from going, uh, from going crazy because without the prayer, some of them will not survive. And prayer has sustained people in Africa. Now think about this. Some people have long-term pro uh, problems that is not quitting and uh, they lack peace in their hearts. All we need to do is cry out to God in prayer. Guess what's going to happen? His word has said that he will make you free. Let's look at a scripture in Psalms 125 verse 3. It says, for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hand into iniquity. God does not want us getting into iniquity. He wants us delivered from the hands of the enemy. I'm going to stop there for today, and I'm going to pray for everyone that is, is watching right now. I'm going to pray that God will change the situation that you're facing right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for anyone that has been afflicted. We rebuke that affliction from their bodies. In the name of Jesus, we command the thing to be removed from them. It has no place. It cannot function in their bodies. In the name of Jesus, we declare Freedom has come to them. And Father, those that are facing maybe some bondage or, or another, whether they're incarcerated or wherever it is, Father, let your angels intervene. Send them help, I pray. In the name of Jesus, we activate the kingdom dynamics. We activate it now in the name of Jesus. Father, shake up things that need to be shaken up. In the name of Jesus, those that have been facing joblessness for a long time, it changes now. They will no longer be afflicted by joblessness. They will no longer be afflicted by financial woes. No sickness, no disease. We decree that now in the mighty name 
of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say, amen and amen and amen. Let's clap our hands and give the Lord praise for what he has done. And I pray that this has helped all of you. It's so good to see so many of you here. We are back on and we are moving. By the way, you can't forget this weekend, we have the School of the Spirit. Oh, my God. The Holy Ghost spoke to me about something. He says, the invitation of the Spirit. The invitation of the Spirit. The Spirit is telling you to come. The Spirit is saying, come. There's an invitation to get into the dimension of the Spirit. If you have not registered, you need to register for it. It's a worthwhile investment you can make. Because I believe that the Spirit of God is inviting us to come in. He's inviting us to come in so that we can come to a place where we learn how to win in life. The Bible says the Spirit and the bride says, come. The spirit and the bride says, come. We're going to be looking at the scripture that says, the spirit and the bride says, come. But it's the invitation into the dimension of the spirit. Because not everybody is initiated into that. But only those that have responded. They have RSVP'd the spirit of God. When the spirit says, come, have you responded to the call? of the spirit that's what we're going to be exploring this weekend and i pray that you register for it and uh, it is going to be glorious hallelujah i will turn it back to mom hallelujah god bless you i can't wait to see you guys soon